Hello guys, this is our project right now, let's get started. Uh, a while ago, I don't know why, I deleted my my Unity project, so I had to download it from the internet. If you don't know, I, I post the, the project in the internet, the link is always in the description. And I was presented with this, which is just like a, a bunch of crap all bunched together. So I decided that from now on I will start every every new tutorial will have uh, or every bunch of tutorials if they are related have a, a little folder with for instance this is tutorial 61 so this is 61 outside sports something like this and everything that we do in that tutorial will be in that folder I'll probably organize all this stuff into little folders like that but for now I'll just put them in the respective folders. Okay, so now we have this uh, a little bit more organized, and uh, the last episode start, uh, we ended with this scene over here, and I'm going to make a copy of this scene. I'll do it basically everything so that we only have the basics, the player and the ground, so that we can start every new tutorial with that same thing. So give me a minute. So right now I deleted. Uh, everything except for the player and some grounds, and also I'll do it now. I'll do some of these scripts from the player because so that we only have the the default script, the simple player script. So give me another minute. Besides those scripts, I'll also do this stuff because right now it won't be needed. Only the points that to check if the player is on the ground or not, and that other stuff. Okay, so that's done. This will be the default scene. So I'll save it. Here we have it, default scene. And I'll just make a copy of it so that we can change this copy in this tutorial. So, like I said, this tutorial will be about an outside force. And right now, I'll show you that that's not quite happening. And to do that, I'll ch I'll add an uh, I'll create a new repulsor object. So Control Shift New, and I'll name it Repulsor, and I'll give it a text so that we can see kind of where it is on the scene. And now this will have two components: a circle collider, which has to be a trigger and it's used by an effector, and it will have to have an point effector 2D with the magnitude it can be. Uh, Repulsive. So, if you don't know what this does, basically it makes the player go further away from this. Uh, let me change the radius because it's too small. There you go. Now, if you see, when a player goes onto it, the player stops. And basically, this shouldn't be happening. This is uh, kind of a bug because what should be happening, let me show you. So, if I disable this script, and put it on here, this is what should be happening. So as you can see, the player jumps around like mad, and now and not just stays like jumping around, bouncing really slowly. So I'll make a way so that we can control the player, we can make the player go like whoa in, in situations like this. So let's open the player script, and I'm going to add a, a, a variable, a bool, public bool outside force and what this will do is like a, a variable that cancels the movement of the player because um, regularly the player is controlled by this and if you are not touching any keys then the, the player's velocity the, the player's horizontal velocity is the base speed which basically means is the speed of whatever the player is standing on, so if the player is standing on the ground, this is zero. If it's standing on a platform, that's the speed of the platform. Anyways, in this case, it will always be zero. So if we are not pressing any keys, this will be zero. Then, in this case, because the x speed, the horizontal speed, is always zero, when we when we do something like this, that this happens, which is not what we want. So I will make a way to bypass this part of the code. So that that doesn't happen. So I just I just had this variable the public pool outside force. 
Now, when do we want to make it active? Well, we want, it make, we want to make it active when it collides with this. So I'll just make this, uh, make a little script here. Turn outside force, something like this, real quick. And what this script will do is uh, on trigger enter td. And the collider to the other. If that collider is a player, so if other dot tag equals player, and I think that's uppercase, it is. Then we want to get the to find the 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 script on that player so we want to get to the other dot get component simple player zero which is the script of the player and find the outside force and make it equal to true save and this will turn the, the outside force to true and remember that the outside force has to be a public uh, else you, you won't be able to access it over here Anyways, now we have a way to turn the outside force to true. Now we have to find a way. Now let's program what that actually does. So, like I said, the outside force is a way to nullify this part. All I have to do is if not outside force. So if the if there is the player is moving like regularly, then this happens. So if the player is being affected by an outside force, we can't move using these keys. So right now let me show you, we basically can't move at all, like that, that happened, and of course that's not what we want. So we want a way to turn the outside force variable off again, so that we can control the player in a more fashionable way, like we did before. And that can be done here, so whenever we enter a collision, for instance we collide with the ground, then we want that outside force to be equals false. Save. And now this is exactly what we want. As you can see, the player is applied, is affected by that in a like we wanted. And as soon as he hits the ground, he stops. Now, what if, right now, if I try to control the player while he's on the air, I can't. Uh, I mean, I can hear, but I can't if he's being affected by that. I'm. I pressed. I just pressed tons of buttons and it did nothing. And if I want to do that, which uh, this is a choice, you can do it or not. I want to. I want to do it. I'm just changing here to also turn outside force off here. So make it equal to false. And if you, uh, I'll explain the code in the one of the next tutorials. But basically, what this time does is. It checks if we start pressing any control key or stop pressing any of the control keys. So if we start pressing one or stop pressing one, then we can control the player again. Save. And you'll see that now, if I put the player in here and try to control it, I can now do such a thing. Anyway, this was today's tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.